Hey, all right, everyone. It's Brian from Let's Imagine We're Gathering, and I don't know about you, but I am ready to crack some packs. We got five contestants uh, from comments earlier today, and I'm not sure when I even posted the last video late yesterday, maybe. So comments last night too. I think I got one. Um, either way, I decided I wanted to do um, five people this time. I figured uh, you know, my numbers aren't huge right now. I think I'm getting an average of a consistent 12 to 13 people that are playing regularly or that are participating, which is fine. Um, no big deal. Um, but I figured five um, for the first round, and then each person will get two packs to accumulate into their total value um, for um, the battle pack competition here. So everything is going to be added in here. That's at least a buck or more. I'm not going to worry about if you have three rares and, and get you the full packs worth. Everybody's pack is going to be able to accumulate um, a dollar or more value cards. Some of the cards might be around 98 cents, 97 cents. I'm going to throw those in there as part of the dollar value. If it gets down to 90 range, I probably won't add it. I know it's pennies on the dollar kind of adding, but that's how I want to do things. So let's go ahead and get into these packs um, real quick before I jump into that, though. A reminder, what I buy is what's up for grabs. We've got the Hofri Go Forged Extended Art Foil, the um, Harmonized Japanese Art Foil, and then Bridge from Below, as well as Mnemonic Betrayal. So some decent cards there. So we're only going to have three winners. But each person gets to choose once they win the first round, second round, third round, whatever. Um, even if we get to 10 players for the next round. I don't know. We'll see what the next few comments are. But without further ado, I'm going to talk my, my head off, your head off, everybody else's head off. Let's go ahead and see what we got in this Modern Horizons set booster box, huh? Oh, I'm kind of excited because, like, I already opened some packs in the previous video and I got some really good hits. So I'm curious to see what kind of stuff um, outside of the two booster, or set boosters I opened for that first video, that kind of preemptive video. I'm curious to see what other stuff comes out of this bad boy. So, uh, we're going to see with these packs here. We're going to grab 10 out. There's 30 in each box. I'm just going to... I know I can save time by just throwing them out here, but I like to randomize because, you know, if I just pull them out of the stop, top of the stack, it seems like you're just getting whatever was laid out there. But if you randomize them, then, hey, you just never know. Besides, it's a battle pack competition, right? Three, right there, and... Number 10. Booyah. I think that's right. Yeah, there's still 20 in there. All right, let's move it off to the side. We have not done any uh, randomizing of the names yet. Archangel Elf, Woot, MTG, MTG Strategist, uh, RU, and Matt Moon have all made their comments for this first round. So, I am going to shuffle, but we're going to stack shuffle, sort of. So, each person is going to get their own little stack. And there's the first five ones. We'll shuffle these up a little bit just because I can. And we'll take that one there. We'll put that one there, that one there, and that one there, and that one there. All right. So they're stacked. doesn't really matter, to be honest. The packs are just going to go in the order they come. How's that sound? Boom. So let's go ahead and randomize our three randomizations. My three randomization favorite numbers into three. Not really. Just simple, quick, and easy. Uh, go ahead and highlight the column, randomize once, randomize twice, and on third randomization, who's going first? Matt Moon is our first pack. Um, so these are all shuffled up. We're not, we're going to, yeah, I'm just going to leave it as is, to be honest. We're just going to go down a line. So we're going to give one pack to Matt Moon, then Woot, RU, Archangel, MTG Strategist, and then back to Matt Moon again. So that's how those are shuffled. It doesn't really matter anyways, to be honest, everything has been randomized. So... First pack. Let's see what we get. So there's a lot of good uncommon cards right now. I think there's about five or six of them that are in the dollar range. One of them is like six bucks. So that's a good hit for um, the tally um, that you can get from these uh, set boosters. We can get a six dollar uncommon. Heck yeah. Sorry. It's out here so everybody can see me crack that up. All right. What do we got first? We got Lucid Dreams for that one. We've got... A planes, woohoo! Super, I do like this planes. I have one of the original arts because I think this is a redone art from an older set. But just with the clouds, lightning, and the planes and all that's pretty really cool art. It's one of my favorites. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe this is just a brand new one, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this one before. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. Sojourner's companion. Oh, we're starting off with the uncommons already. Flay essence. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good omen to get this many uncommons right off the bat. Flame Tongue Yearling, Thraben Watcher, Captain Ripley Vance. That's a cool, legendary creature. Spreading Insurrection, and our rare is 
Academy Manufactor. Not sure what it's going for in value, but who knows? We'll tally it up here in a minute. And another uncommon, we got Quarry and Ranger. What else we got back here? We've got a retro framed step through. Those can be a little bit more valuable than some of the other ones, but it just depends on what it is. And then we have a regular foil, worldly weir world weary. World weary foil. And a crab token. Alright, uh let's go ahead and tally that up real quick and see what we got for his first pack and move on to the next one. <clears throat> All right, Academy Manufactor got the nod on this one. Uh, it was worth three ninety one, but the Quarian, uh, what is that card? The Quarian whatever Ranger was worth about eighty six cents. Uh, I figured some of these cards are going to be higher in commons and uncommons. So I was just I decided I'm going to add them if they're seventy five cents or higher, closer to eighty if they're not range. If we're actually going to be that close in, in like a battle pack competition where somebody's got five cents more than the other person, I'll go back and recalculate and make it fair, but I don't think it's going to be that close. Um, nonetheless, um, that's what he has right now. It's 475 first pack. Not too bad, you know, I would say that's pretty decent. The packs right now, unfortunately, are going for like 11 bucks a piece, so that's not really a good, a good, a good turnaround, but nonetheless, we're going to move on to Woot MTG for pack number one for a Woot here. Let's see, we've got, and I am going to check these art cards, because some of these might actually be worth a buck. Never know. Goldmire Bridge. we got a Swamp. Good old Swamp. Glimmerbairn. Ethereum Spinner. Step Through. Loathsome Curator. Bottle Golems. And our double set of cards. Said and Done. Uncommon. Got another one, Fast and Furious, all right. And our rare is going to be, boom, Calibrated Blast. I don't know how exciting that is, but I made it sound exciting. So Calibrated Blast right there. Bada bing, bada boom, instant spell. And our next card is another rare. It's actually a Mythic. We do have two in this pack, so that's a good hit for Woot. Uh, mythic rare is Mirari's Wake. That might be pretty decent. I don't remember what that one's going for, but I feel like that card's not bad at all. So I'm going to read this because it's a mythic. It's a five-drop enchantment. I'm right down my alley for my enchantment deck, probably. We'll see what it does. Creature control, get a plus and plus one. So super beneficial. Whenever you tap land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced. Yeah, that's going to have to go in there. I mean, I've already got an abundance of enchantments, but stuff like that that builds your creatures up a little bit and gives you extra mana, not too bad to get out there. Might take you a minute to get it. You know, Commander does kind of play out a little longer, so once it's on the field of play, it'll, it'll speed up the process. Not a bad card at all. And our retro frame card is going to be... Terminal Agony, the one everybody gets. Oh my gosh, it's such a common uncommon. Common, a common retro frame. And our foil is a common Ornithopter of Paradise. All right. And a token, bird token. All right, well, not too bad. We'll check out, see what Woot has for his first round. All right, Mirari's Wake was the top card in his pack at 825. Didn't have any additional helper cards. Um, the foil was actually only about worth 60 cents, so it was under the cusp. Um, for that, but still not, not, not too bad at all. So, uh, Moot takes the lead with 825. All right, moving right along. We got RU. Let's see what we get out of RU's packs. I wonder if these, are these, are there supposed to be list cards in these? I'm not saying that, I mean, I expect one. I'm three packs deep and I opened two from the other night and I didn't, haven't had any yet. So I, I'm thinking there should be, but I, I don't know. We'll find out. And are there any more gold foil stamp signatures? Don't know either. Rise and Shine. That is the art card. And we've got a pretty island card. Pretty Island card. Abiding Grace. Right into the Uncommons. That's a good sign. Arcbound Javelinier. Javelinier. Javel... I can't... Is it Javel... It is Javelinier. It's just a weird... Power Depot. Capricrome. Slag Strider. Alright, I feel like I'm a little off on my... There we go. That's much clearer. Barbed Spike. Arcbound Welp. And our first rare is Suspend. I heard that's a pretty good one, too. Suspend Instant Spell. Good old Suspend. And nope, no additional rare card. Thought we was going to get one. We got another uncommon Zuran Orb. Zuran Orb. Zero drop artifact. Sacrifice land, you gain two life. Not bad at all. Keep you in the game. And our first retro. I guess it's our first. It might be only. I don't know. Uh, we've got Goblin Oromancer. That's a common Goblin Oromancer. Oh, we have a foil retro in the back. 
It doesn't look to be etched. It looks like regular foil. What's it going to be? The Underworld Cookbook. That's actually a pretty good hit right there. Good old Underworld Cookbook. Then I know the regular basic one's like worth a buck and a half. I wonder what the uh, retro frame foil one is. Pretty cool, the old retro. So the Underworld Cookbook, I'll read that one drop. Pay, uh, tap it, discard a card, create a food token. Pay four, tap it, sacrifice uh, the Underworld Cookbook. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So not bad. Pretty useful nonetheless. All right, nothing there. No token. All right, let's see what his tally comes up to with that retro frame. He may have taken a lead. I'm not sure if Suspend's got any value, but we're going to check it out. <clears throat> All right, looks like retro frame or the retro frame Underworld Cookbook foil was actually the top card. It was at 341, um, but Suspend was also about 220. So add them together for that first pack. It's $5.61. Not enough to take the lead, but it's still a good number to have going into pack two here in a little bit. So not too bad, not too shabby. All right, Archangel Elf, you are on the the clock. Let's see. Do we have a list card? Nope. And we may not get it. I guess I haven't looked into it enough. I, I mean, I like to research a little bit, but I don't research that much, to be honest. I just watch videos. <laughs> All right. We've got Step Through art card. A forest. Really? Tavern Scoundrel. Arcbound Slasher. Slashing. Rust Veil Bridge. Foundry Helix, Arcbound Prototype, and our first uncommon is Terramorph, Blessed Respite, Blessed Respite maybe, and then our, we got a Mythic, first one behind it, uh, those uncommons is a Mythic, we got Thrasa Temp Tempest Roar, I've never seen this one, or is it Thrasta, not Thrasa, Thrasta, Tempest Roar, a 12-drop beastly dinosaur, legendary creature. Uh, kind of like Galta, this spell costs three less to cast for each other spell you cast this turn, but instead of being creature power, it's for the spells you played. So Trample and Haste, Trample over Planeswalkers. This creature can deal excess combat damage to controller of the Planeswalker it's attacking. Noice! Thrasta Tempest Roar has Hexproof as long as it's entered the battlefield this turn. So we're off the bat. Pretty good deal. Does it have haste? Did I read that? Yes. So bam, you can start smoking. And it's hexproof. That's a pretty good deal right there. Nether rare back here. We've got Goblin Bombardment. That was always a good one back in the day. It was a decent card. I don't know if the value has dropped a lot, but it's being reprint, so it's hard saying. Uh, go Goblin Bombardment. Two drop enchantment. Sacrifice creature. Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to any target. Not bad. If you got a bunch of tokens to get rid of. And our retro frame is... Terminal Agony? No way! That is the coolest card I've seen ever. Bleeding Eyes? I mean, that's got to be worth a buck ton. A buck ton. I could say the F-bomb, but I, I try to keep it clean. I only really say the cuss words when I'm angry. <laughs> You'll find out maybe one day when I get doing some more videos, some MTG Arena videos. And we've got Loathsome Curator foil and a squirrel token. All right. Curious to see what that thrast is worth. So let's go ahead and check out the value of Archangel's first pack. Ooh, the race is getting ever so close right now. Um, not bad, 680 for that total pack. Thrasta was only worth about four dollars and fifty cents, but Goblin Bombardment was on there for a buck fifty, and the Squirrel Token of all things was ringing in at eighty cents. So it's got to go on the stack because I said about seventy-five cents or higher. The uh, Step Through Art Card was actually seventy-two cents, so it was just underneath the cut to be added in there. So hopefully uh, that doesn't kill uh, Archangel's last pack. Maybe he loses by seventy cents. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, let's move on. We're going to MTG Strategist's first pack. Let's see what kind of goods come out of this one. Pack number five. Still no list card. I have a feeling that maybe they didn't do it this time around. But there's still plenty of packs to open, so who knows. Mm, that's a cool art series card. That is Slow Slagwoods, Slagwoods Bridge. And we've got a mountain. Tavern Scoundrel. I think we've seen that one before. That seems to be pretty common. Common. I mean, it is common, right? Dun, dun, dun. Eventually, we'll zoom in and we'll get some good quality reading here. Arcbound Slasher. Get out of the screen there a little bit. Rustvale Bridge. Foundry Helix. Arcbound Prototype. Break Ties. And we've got Arcbound Shakira. Shaka Shikari. Shakira. <laughs> Shikari. I'll read it right eventually. And our rare is Chitter Spitter. I don't know if that's a good one. I know the scrolls are pretty hot and popular right now, but I'm not sure if Chitter Spitter is the top one or if it's just a, a buck or two. Maybe nothing at all. Who knows? 
The old Chitter Spitter artifact, three drop. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a token. If you do, put an acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. Squirrels you control get a plus and plus for each acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. Pay a force tap to create a one more green squirrel token. That could be pretty useful if you go squirrel crazy. Squirrel crazy. Another uncommon we've got. Greed. Ugh. Sorry, I had to do that. I think uh, I was watching Joey Moss and he did that. <laughs> Alrighty. Anywho, moving on to the next one. Our retro frame is Prismatic Ending. I don't know about that one. That's just an uncommon. So it's not too out of the, the world there, but it's pretty cool looking. Uncommon. Prismatic Ending. And then we've got a foil common, Mental Journey. Can't go wrong with foils. I mean, you can because they're not really worth it too much, but still. All right, nonetheless, there we go. Round one, round one. First pack complete. Uh, let's go ahead and tally up. We'll see what MTG Stratus Scott's has for the their first pack. <clears throat> All right, we still got a pretty close battle. Retro uh, for a retro border. Uh, Prismatic ending was actually the top card at four seventy six. Chitter Spitter only came in at one dollar, so added together five seventy six. So not too bad. I was worried there for a second. MTG Strata just had absolutely nothing going for him. He did have another, uh, an, or not he adds another, but another art series card is worth seventy two cents. Um, his was. Um, so some of those might be worth a buck. Right now they're still just under the cusp of what I, I said I was going to ca calculate. But nonetheless, round or pack one for all the participants is done and over with. And then we're still everybody's. It's anybody's ball game. I mean, Woot could get another pack that gets him a dollar card. Um, right now we're pretty on the sloppy side for pack value because, like I said, it, they're about eleven dollars a piece at the store. Um, so I'm way behind the curve here. So maybe I'll hit something pretty sweet here in those, these last five packs. So all right, pack number two for Matt Moon. Moving right along, let's get some stuff. And I am going to change um, the card only if the card that is up there for them currently um, is worth more than the one that was, um, or the other one's worth more. So like if Academic Manufacturer is no longer the highest value card in this next pack, it the, that one will go up there, and then you'll see the total value added. So we'll do that. Just explain in case you see the cards change. Um, all right, that's a cool looking art card. What is it? What do we got here? We got Scurry Oak. And we do have a foil forest. Bam, right off the bat. Not too shabby. Foil forest. It's always helpful if it can be above 75 cents. Marble gargle. 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 Ornithopter of Paradise. Get up there. <laughs> Zoom in. See the words. People might want to pause and read the card. I don't know. Maybe they won't. Uh, Razor Tried, Razor Tide Bridge, I don't know why it's tried. Uh, Lucid Dreams, that might be a good one, I can't remember if that's right. Said and Done, already looked at that one, it wasn't worth nothing. Uh, our rare is Karth the Lion, I've been talking about that guy, I don't know if he's got a lot of value, I know Joey Moss got pretty excited about him when he popped up, but I don't know if he's worth that much. But nonetheless, we'll check it out when we get to that tally portion of the video. Uh, we got another rare right behind the Karth. Obsidian Charmaw. That just sounds bad, eh, doesn't it? Obsidian Charmaw. Five drop creature dragon. This spell costs one less to cast for each land your opponent's control that could produce a colorless spell. Uh, or colorless mana. Flying when Obsidian Charmaw, Charmaw enters the battlefield, destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Noise. Noise. Oh, another one. We got a mythic. Bam, three, three rares. Sometimes these packs really hit it off. So Matt Moon, I'm not sure what that's going for, um, but we'll see. Or the Obsidian Charm. What do we got? Mythic rare. Oh, Titania, Protector of Argoth. I know Titania is a pretty good card. Some of the cards that are printed with her um, in the older version cards or whatever she does, not too shabby. So I'm curious to see what she's worth. Five drop, legendary creature, elemental. When Titania, Protector of Argoth, enters a battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And I'm shaking a lot, so I'm sorry. Hold on. <sighs> Whenever land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, to create a 5 through green elemental creature token. Boom! That's pretty sweet right there. Let's see what a retro is. A retro going to be another rare or mythic? Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be great? That'd be four. Boom! Nope. Glimmer Baron. Just a common. Feel, feel kind of ripped off, don't you? You're like, oh, we're going to get a fourth rare. And no. And our foil is uncommon, and it is Steel Drome Dairy. Steel Drome Dairy. All right, cool. Cool. And a clue token. So there we go. Three rares in that pack. Matt Moon may have just... I know... It, I'm, I'm pretty sure with just one of those, he's going to jump above the leader. But he needs to have a big jump because Woot's got a four, $4 lead on him right now, essentially, almost. All right, let's see what we got. Check it out. 
boom, and just like that, there's a lead change. Of course, there should be in the second second uh, pack for all the participants. But Titania, uh, Protector of Argoth, was worth just under five bucks, four ninety five, and then uh, the other two cards were like a buck a piece. So jumped another seven dollars on his total, which gives him eleven eighty. So there is a lead change, which is expected. Like I said a second ago. <laughs> all right, Woot. Let's see what you got in pack number two, buddy. Let's see what you got. Thopter token, man, uh, that's a keeper. Thopter token is a keeper. Hold on, camera. Ugh, there we go. Moving, moving too much apparently. All right, we have got uh, Gaia's will or Gaia's will. I forgot how you pronounce it. Uh, art series card. I didn't even. I just threw it down there to show it to you. I'm not really showing them. I guess they're kind of cool. They're just kind of an ex an exploded version of what's on the card. Mountain discerning taste. Yeah, that that tastes discerning. Late to dinner. Well, that's kind of a combo, isn't it? Discerning taste and late to dinner. Okay. Sir Jorner's Companion. Goldmire Bridge. Breathless Knight. Battlebone. Batterbone. Batterbone, not battle. Batterbone. Goblin Tarp Runner. And our rare is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Misty Rainforest. Oh, that's the game changer. Woot, you are on fire, brother. So Misty Wayne Rain, Rainforest is like I think it's the highest valued uh, rare uh, fetch land in the in what's was released in this set. That's at least what I heard some people talking. About. It might not be. I could be wrong, but it's still one of the top ones. So that's a big hit, dude. Way to go. That's gonna jump you up pretty high. Uh, that's gonna be hard to catch, folks. Hopefully, there's some other good stuff in these packs. Woot's gonna walk away with round one, and we got another rare back here for old Wootski. What's in this one? Cursed Totem. That's pretty good, too. Dang. Cursed Totem. Two-drop. Artifact. Activated abilities of creatures can't be activated. Uh, so in case you weren't sure, if you're new to the game or you know, but maybe you just want to be refreshed, going back to Misty Rainforest, to tap it, pay one life, sacrifice, Rainforest, search your library for a forest, or island card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your land. So essentially, fetching a land. That's why they're called fetch lands. Go get them. All right. And then we've got a common uh, showcase card. First one. This is the first one we've had. Floodhound. They're pretty cool. I like, I really love to collect all the foil versions of these. I just think those are literally just unique to me. I mean, nothing too crazy about them, but for collector purposes, the foil ones. I mean, I want to get them all, but I don't know. Modern Horizons is just too expensive for me to go trying to get all this stuff. And then we've got Chatterstorm foil. A little squirrely. And we say we had a thought for token back there. All right, let's go ahead and add to Woot's already, you know, general lead from the first uh, first pack. Um, so, yeah, let's see what he's got. Uh, crazy stuff right there, folks. Well, I knew these fetch lands were high-valued cards. I didn't really get a chance to look at the value of all these, but this is that that's going to be hard to catch, folks. So, Misty Rainforest comes in clocking at forty-eight dollars and some change, so just under forty-nine bucks uh, for the old Misty Rainforest, and plus a two fifty uh, uh, Cursed Totem card uh, added to the original eight something that Moot had for around for first pack it puts him at fifty-nine dollars and seventy-three cents. That's going to be hard to uh, surpass. Now, you could see somebody could get another fetch land, or maybe somebody hits a retro foil fetch land or something like that. Oh, man, that's a tough one. Woot's got the lead, and he's got a commanding lead. So moving right along, let's get into the next pack for RU and see uh, if he has a find a way to catch Woot MTG. That was nasty. Old kick in the pants. All right. Here we go. Food token. Food token. We've got an art card. Search the premises. We got an island. <clears throat> Piercing rays. Misty rainforest. Man, oh, so speaking of which, uh, if you watch uh, Bad Boy Gaming, I watch them every now and then. I mean, I watch them a decent amount of stuff. He just chopped a pack, a collector pack in half, and he got a misty rainforest out of it. Nared Mesa, and uh, I think uh, Marsh Flats. I was like, man, that was the, probably the worst pack you <laughs> could chopped. Yeah, check his video out. Uh, I'm not trying to advertise for everybody, but hey, you know, we'll talk. We'll talk each other up, whatever needs to be done. <clears throat> All right, we've got Soul of Migration. Fairgrounds Patrol. Uh, Scuttle Tide. Going to the Uncommons already. Prophetic Titan. Altar of the Goif. And our first rare is, well, maybe our only rare, Blood Braid Marauder, Creature Human Berserker. Yeah, I got another one. 
Fractured Sanity. I think that's pretty decent. Three drop, Fractured Sanity. Each opponent mills 14 cards. Uh, that's right down your alley, um, are you? It's one of my guys from work. This is the type of deck he would put together. You know, not necessarily a mill per se, but a blue deck that would you know get rid of your half your deck or a lot of your deck. He likes to put some decks together like that. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, so Fractured Sanity, that's a pretty good one. Uh, another rare. Three rares. Hitting big. Let's see if it hits something nice. Chainer Nightmare Adept. Don't know about that guy, but that's a legendary creature. So I'll read it real quick. Uh, four drop. Uh, human minion. Discard your card. Discard a card. You may cast a creature spell from your graveyard this turn. Activate only once each turn. Whenever a non token creature enters a battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until, end of, until your next turn. So essentially, it kind of has the ability of Lurus. Only Lurus is kind of like you don't have to get rid of a card to play stuff from your graveyard, but this is kind of sort of like that. And then we've got a common showcase card. Kitchen Imp. Man, the Kitchen Imp coming in hot. And what do we got back here? A common rare and jewel-eyed cobra. So nothing crazy there at the back end, but still pretty good pickups. I don't. I mean, that's not going to catch Misty Rainforest, but it might put him in the $15 mark. Maybe 10. Maybe break 10. We'll see. Let's go ahead and tally it up and see what Ru has for his total. Apparently, I was giving his cards a little bit too much credit there. <laughs> uh, Fractured for Fractured, Fractured Sanity was only worth two bucks. I thought for some reason I feel like it was like more of a six or seven dollar card. Uh, so are you only bumped up to eight dollars and thirty six cents? That is not enough to catch Misty Rainforest up there with Mister Wood MTG. So sorry, buddy. Maybe next time. All right, moving right along to Archangel Elf, pack number two. What are we gonna have? Yeah, I'm thinking there's no list cards here. This just doesn't. Squirrel token, eighty cents. Boom. <laughs> We've got art card. That is. Sithis Harvester's Hand. Sithis Harvester's Hand. And we do have a foil island. The last foil land was not worth very much, but the islands sometimes tend to pop a little bit more. So nice shiny foil island with the palm tree. Uh, Vermin Gorger. I'm guessing he kills rats. I don't know. Or just vermin in general. Jewel Eyed Cobra. Funnel Web Recluse. I'm losing my. My zoom here. Bone shards. Dark moss bridge. We got slag strider. And Torok Dread Cantor. I jumped right into that. I'm sorry. I didn't even check those mythics. So we got Torok, the Dread Cantor mythic rare. Two drop legendary creature, human cleric. Kick across the two swamps. Protection from white. Whenever an opponent discards a card, put a plus and plus one counter on Torok or Dread Canter. When Torok enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, target opponent discards two cards at random. Boom! Kick it. Kick it. And we got another one. We got a retro frame. Not retro, I'm sorry. This is a showcase frame. Rare card. What's it going to be? Harmonic Prodigy. That's pretty cool looking. Creature, human, wizard, two drop, prowess. If an ability of a shaman or another wizard you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Kick in the pants. Trigger, trigger, trigger. We got Uncommon. Greed. I don't know why they threw that back there. I feel like, oh, we're just going to throw a standard or just an Uncommon in the back. They'll never notice it. I mean, it's just stupid, but whatever. Another one. This one's Blossoming Calm. That's a showcase card. And then we've got... We did not get a Retro this time. We got Gargadon Foil. Gargadon Foil. And a Squirrel Token. All right, so we got a Mythic Rare. We can add to the tally there. I don't know if it's enough to catch Misty Rainforest. I'm telling you, you're going to have to hit these fetch lands if you're going to hit big uh with this set with these packs so uh all right let's see what happens <clears throat> all right torok dread canter was in fact top card coming in at five dollars and sixty cents so that's a good pickup it jumped archangel Elf's total to 14.25 still definitely not enough to catch mr rainforest uh, so sorry about you um good pack though that's good that's some good stuff out of that pack for sure I did realize that when I hit the squirrel token, it was one from Double Masters that was worth 80 cents. So I think I tallied that on somebody. It doesn't really matter because 80 cents isn't going to change the game because Woot's got this by a long shot. All right, last person that can try to catch old Wootski, MTG Strategist. Let's see what he pulls. Maybe a gold foil stamp? No, I don't think I'm going to get any of those either. Trash. Some fairly full naked person floating off the ground a little bit. Bone shards. All right. Mountain. Scophos Reaver. 
Scofos Reaver, Flooded Tow, Fodder Tow, Fodder Tosser. I remember that from the last one. Terminal Agony, man. I keep getting this card. It's awesome. Dross Forge Bridge. Uncommon. Underworld Hermit. Underworld Kermit. Ravenous Squirrel. That's a black and green. I was like, that's a black squirrel card. And I saw the green. Squirrel Sovereign. And a rare card is Piru. Piru. Piru, the volatile. Big old dragon. Elder Dragon. Uh, 700 drop. <laughs> two, four, six, eight, eight drop with three collars, two of each. Legendary creature, Elder Dragon, flying lifelink at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice Pyru, the Pyru, the volatile, unless you pay a mountain, a plains, and a swamp. When Pyru dies, it deals seven damage to each non-legendary creature. Well, that's kind of a board wipe, sort of, in a way, or at least a big minimizer. And we got another rare. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Solitary confinement. Yeah, you're stuck in confinement. Two drop it. For three drop enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice solitary confinement unless you discard a card. Skip your draw step. You have Shroud. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. Nice. That's pretty good, too. I like having protection in my enchantment deck. We've got a Showcase World Weary. Pretty pretty gloomy looking card there. And then a Foil Counterspell. Nice. I mean, it's not a borderless one, but still, it's a Foil Counterspell. That's got to be a buck or two, right? All right, cool. All right, well, let's tally it up and see where uh, MTG, MTG Strategist uh, ends up. Not going to catch Woot. I'm pretty sure this is a game ender. But nonetheless, we'll check the tally and finish this video out. We all had a whole lot of help there. Uh, he got about four to five different cards that actually were above the 75 cent mark, but unfortunately the counter spell foil was only $1.85, and that was the highest card out of the pack. So it bumped up to eleven seventy seven, which is good, um, as I guess as far as like not being at the bottom. Well, yeah, he wasn't. RU, unfortunately, was the bottom barrel, $8.36 for his total of two rounds, or two packs. Uh, is our winner tonight, $59.73. Uh, I didn't highlight it. I normally highlight it green, so I apologize if I missed that. But anyways, $105.91 in total value of cards that are generally above $0.75 cents in these packs. Uh, divided by the 10 packs, $0.10.50 cents per pack is what the average was. And you can buy them for 11 bucks at the store. Right now, what I paid was just under two ninety for the set box. Um, but that's including tax. So, I mean, if you don't really count the tax, it's a little less. But, I mean, I had to pay for it, right? So... Um, and that totals about nine sixty a pack. So I'm ahead a little bit, not by much right now based on the ratio. Um, but still, there's t 20 more packs to open. Next round, uh, we're going to do the same thing right now. We're going to shoot for five. If we get ten quick, then uh, those ten can play uh, one pack per person. Uh, but if we get five and then we don't get the ten, you know, in a day or two, then we'll just do five. I'm trying to look for new uh, contestants. So if you played this first round, um, have to wait till the third round to jump in again, I think. Um, but for right now, it's just going to be uh, new contestants for the second round. So get your comment in. Tell me what card you like from the set or what you liked about this video. Anything, just make a comment. Get on that video. And um, you can be a participant in the next round. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. And Woot, let me know what you want. The card selection was at the beginning of the video. Uh, what card do you like um, out of the four options? And I'll send that down to you, man. Um, well, thanks for watching the video. Uh, again, I think I said that once. And we'll catch you on the next one. Deuces! Deuces!